ALK uh, has gone from a little craziness to kind of settling down over the last few months. So in the, there, there are really three different categories. So somebody who's already on crizotinib, and there are plenty of patients still on crizotinib, when they progress, if you actually rank all of the different ALK inhibitors, the next generation drugs, their response rate post crizotinib is about the same. It all looks pretty good. Where they differ is in their median progression-free survival. And there's clearly brigatinib, which is the standout winner. It's got 15 to 16 months median progression-free survival. It's reproducible across studies. Electinib in the same setting is seven to nine months. Seretinib is five to six months. Lorlatinib is 11 to 12 months. So brigatinib is the standout winner. We may not understand why the preclinical modeling doesn't seem to say that should happen, but that tells us the model isn't perfect. The second group is you walk through the door and you're ALK positive with stage four disease, what do you start on? The drugs that have a first line license are crizotinib, seritinib, and electinib. Crizotinib, we already know that electinib can beat it in a head-to-head -head study uh, called ALEX. Seritinib only compared itself to chemotherapy and was better than chemotherapy, but really didn't excite anyone. So at the moment, the obvious choice is electinib in the first line setting. Brigatinib, that drug in the second line post crizotinib setting that seemed to be the best drug, has recently shown very early data of its head to head study versus crizotinib. With 10 months less follow up than Alex, it's already got a very comparable hazard ratio. And the really exciting thing about this field is we're starting to realize that these hazard ratios can mature over time.